Madam Ac Acting Secretary, I'd like, to I'd like to apologize for the insulting way that you are welcomed to this hearing. The opening comments were appalling, unnecessary, and mean-spirited. And they were an attempt to cover up the extraordinarily great work the 117th Congress and the Biden administration did to bring our country through the worst global pandemic in a century. Thanks to the American Rescue Plan, the Infrastructure Law, the Chips and Science Act, and the Inflation Reduction Act, we have the most robust economic recovery of any country in the world. We have the lowest unemployment rate in decades, and we have seen wage increases for workers who have not participated in the economic growth that benefited large corporations and the wealthy during the prior administration. So I want to thank you for your service to our country and the American people you work to help every day. And as you and I have discussed previously, I represent North Carolina's 6th Congressional District, where we are enjoying the growth of advanced manufacturing, particularly in the clean energy, automotive, and aerospace industries. We welcome this growth, but I hear from employers in my district that they are struggling to find skilled workers to fill these good paying jobs. So can you tell us more about the Department of Labor's work to expand training opportunities to help workers gain the skills they need and also how Congress can help with these efforts? Thank you so much for that question, Congresswoman. Um, so uh, we are, um, really laser focused on this exact issue of um, meeting the need for skilled workers in specific jobs and industries that are growing as a result of the important work of this body in partnership with the president to make historic investments. What we're also seeing, and this is a tribute to, 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 to good policy and how important it is when, when, when um, the federal government um, engages in policy that helps to expand the economy and build jobs, the private sector also um, contributes. And so we are seeing hundreds of billions of dollars now being invested in these exact same industries, um, especially in advanced manufacturing, in ways that I think are going to have a historic impact on the, the economy going forward, building a strong, resilient, and equitable economy. So our role as the Department of Labor is to help make sure that training programs are actually meeting employer needs and uh, recruiting from workers who, and it's important to say because I think it has been suggested otherwise that workers have come back into the labor market um, to pre-pandemic levels, uh, especially in the prime age um, uh, work, workforce of uh, like 25 to 54. So, um, so we are seeing, um, again, historic economic growth. Um, but what we need to do is finish that job. We need to make sure that th those impacts are felt in every single community, that every worker who wants a good job can find the educational and training opportunities to get them, and that employers, who I've also talked to many who say they need skilled workers, it is our job to help support them, not to do it for them, right? The, the whole idea is that, um, you know, the, that, that um, communities working together have solved lots of problems before, but our job is to help to support that and to bring um, uh, all of the players in the workforce system in line to help do this. So one of the things that I have not yet talked about, I've talked about a lot of things that we're doing, but one is a, it's an $80 million grant that is specific to these particular sectors, infrastructure, advanced manufacturing, clean energy, to help build proven models uh, um, that, that for training and also to help scale them, right? It's not enough now because of the historic growth that we're seeing, because the jobs are being created, because of the point that's been made, that there are lots of jobs out there now, right now that need workers. We need to be able to scale and to be able to move quickly to finish the job, and that's something that um, I look forward to doing and continuing to do with you and with this body. Thank you so much. My district is also home to extraordinary universities and colleges, such as North Carolina A&T, which recently got a $23.7 million dollar grant to build a, uh, a training program for workers and Guilford Technical Community College, which was just received a $1.7 million federal grant to expand its truck driver training programs. Should we be working more with our colleges and community colleges to help create workforce development programs? 100, I see that my time is about to expire. 100% yes. Thank you so much for your testimony today and thanks for all your hard work.